Welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. From last session, we downloaded a raster from Alaska and Western Canada, which was originally in longitude and latitude, and we projected it so now every cell is uh, one kilometer wide and one kilometer high. And ultimately, we're going to map the Yukon River watershed from this raster. The first step we'll do is we'll eliminate any local pits or sinks that might exist in this elevation raster. So to do that, we can use a geoprocessing tool called Fill. So we'll fill our raster if it has a local pit or sink just due to random errors. And we'll output it to our home folder. And we'll call that filled. And this really is a minor filling. So if we look at, we've got the exact same high. We have the exact same low. The means will be very similar. But if there were any local pits, they are filled. And the way fill works, if we go to ArcGIS Help, learn more about how fill works. So basically, this is how fill works, is here we have elevations, and then we have a random error, and then it fills that one cell so it matches. So now we have, we can do things like watersheds without the watershed ending at this local pit that is due to a random error. So for the remaining of the session, we'll work with our filled raster. So let's remove our original elevation, and now we have our filled raster. One thing we might want to do is color code our raster so the lower elevations are green and the higher elevations are snow. So if we go to properties and under symbology, let's pick a color ramp where we have snow at higher elevations. And then let's use a one standard deviation stretch and then OK. So here we have lots of snow at higher elevations. So anywhere it's white, the elevation is one standard deviation or greater above the mean. And if you want less snow, if you go to properties, let's do a two standard deviation stretch. So now the snow is in areas that are two standard deviations above the mean. And if you want even less snow, we can do a three standard deviation stretch. Now the snow is in areas that are three standard deviations above the mean. And let's color code our ocean some ocean color. To do that, if we go to our properties, display background values that have zero elevation, give it some ocean color. And then we can zoom in on Okay, the other thing we could do with our elevation raster is create a hillshade, and we use the hillshade geoprocessing tool to do that. We take our elevation raster, and then we'll output our raster as our hillshade. And then you as a user get to decide where the sun is in the sky. By default, it's in the northwest part of the sky. For example, 90 would mean the sun is to the east. 180 would mean the sun is to the south. 270 would be to the west. So 315 is the northwest. And then how high is the sun? At these latitudes, the sun is not above 45 degrees. So let's change that to the sun elevation above the horizon is 25 degrees. We'll create a hillshade with the sun in the northwest part of the sky and it's 25 degrees above the horizon. There we have our hillshade and we can enhance our contrast by going to properties and then let's give it a standard deviation contrast, one standard deviation. If you're less than one standard deviation, you'll be jet black. If you're above the mean by one standard deviation or greater, you'll be bright white. Enhances our contrast. Now if we take our elevation raster and we change our drawing order, so we click on list by drawing order and drag the elevation raster so it's on top. Then what we could do is we can change the transparency to see our hillshade 
below our elevation raster. Go to properties and display. Let's try a transparency of 50%. Now we can see the hill shade below our elevation raster. And if you want to fine tune it, if you right mouse click anywhere in the gray and go to effects, we can adjust the contrast, brightness, and transparency. Let's do a transparency that's less transparent, 20% transparent. And then let's do a transparency that's more transparent, so 80% transparent. Basically, you as a user can dynamically adjust the transparency until you get it the way you want it. The other thing we might want is contours of equal elevation. Create contours, we can use the contour tool. Input raster is always the elevation raster. And then we'll output our contours. So let's say we're gonna have 100 meter contours. You would just specify what contour interval is. So we'll have 100 meter contours starting at sea level. Notice in the Yukon Flats, we have very few contours because it's a flat landscape. And in the Yukon Kwasakoyim Delta, we have very few contours. If we zoom in on the Alaska Range, you can see we have lots of contours because it's very rugged topography. So we're interested in delineating the watershed of the Yukon River, and it would be possible to do that by contours. You'd have to zoom in. So for example, here's the Yukon River in this area here. What you'd have to do is find the ridge line where the watershed drains into the Yukon River versus where it doesn't drain into the Yukon River. So it's possible, but be very difficult. So in the next video session, we're going to use an automated method of delineating the watershed based on the flow direction within each pixel.